Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. What are we looking at today? Well, this is what? Status detail. Well, this is a command that you can run in the ESA, the email security appliance, to check how the system is doing. Well, there's a lot of stuff that you can check in this command. I'm not gonna go through all that. So why did I even run this command in the first place? To check the CPU and the RAM utilization. Well, in this particular video, I'd be uh, talking more about the CPU utilization. Why are we even bothered about any of this? Well, I'll tell you what. Well, you know that your ESA is doing a great job. It's moving all the malicious stuff. When I say malicious stuff, it means the spams, the viruses, and other things. It's doing all that. It's moving all the malicious stuff to either, quarant either the quarantines or it's dropping it. So it's taking care of your network. It's making sure that nothing bad enters your network from the emails. Well, all you got to do in return for all this hard work that your ESA is doing, you just got to keep an eye on its health. You got to make sure that its CPU load average does not increase a lot. If it goes higher, if its RAM utilization goes higher, if it passes, if it, if it uh, you know, uh, breaches that certain threshold, then what's going to happen? It's going to go into the resource conservation mode. And at that time, things look really bad because, you know, you'll, you'll, find, uh, you'll find that um, you'll have trouble receiving emails and all that. Okay, so um, let's take a look at a Python program that helps us basically make sure that we monitor the ESA, uh, ESA CPU um, every certain amount of time that we can set. And okay, let's go there. So here we are. Well, this is the program I was talking about. Well, this is what I've written to make sure that my computer uh, fetches the CPU information from the ESA for me. So I've made sure that um, it's done every 10 seconds to make sure that whenever the CPU off of my ESA goes above 80%, it's letting me know about that. It's basically doing a couple of things at that time. It's making a beep sound and using this particular module, I've made sure that it makes a sound that time, letting me know that, hey, there's something wrong. Your CPU is above the given threshold that I'm including, um, I'm using time to mention the time at that very moment as in when the CPU was high, what was the time at that time? Okay, there you go. That's what I was talking about. It just made that noise. Um, I'll possibly. No. Oh, well, I just paused it there for a second because yeah, that was kind of annoying. Anyways, uh, so this is the function that I'm concerned uh, about in this particular video. So, from the main function, we're doing the same things that were discussed in the last video. Uh, fetching the IP address and the port number of uh, the ESA on which we're trying to connect and setting the base URL to make sure that we connect to the correct ESA, fetching the username and the password from the user, and then converting that username and password to base64 format so that you know we're able to connect correctly to the ESA. And then in order to pass the headers correctly, this is the information right here. This is these are the headers that we're going to pass on to the ESA authorization basics. So this is basic uh, basic authorization. This is how basic authentication works. And this is actually the format in which it's written. So basic keyword followed by a space and then the credentials, which is basically going to be your username and then colon password in this format and then converting whole, this whole thing into base 64. So that's what we're going to place here. We've discussed it in uh, the last video, so you can just check that out. Okay, so returning uh, the headers from there, and once those are returned, we're saving them in uh, headers right here. So after this, this is where the main thing uh, starts. We are running an infinite loop in which we are actually calling this function again and again and passing on the headers to it. So uh, what's going on here? The response variable, we get the response from the ESA and stored it. 
uh, stored in the response variable. We are converting it. We are using JSON.loads to make sure whatever content we have from there, we store it in the JS variable. Well, you can name it better, actually. So I, I don't know why I use JS, but I don't know. And it looks OK to me. As, uh, yeah, it looks uh, OK to me. Yep, if JS. So this is the logic. If JS data percentage CPU load is greater than 80. So this value right here, it fetches the information about the CPU, okay? And then we're comparing it with this value. We're checking if it's greater than 80 or not. If it is greater than 80, then go ahead and do all this stuff. What is this stuff? We're printing out percentage of the CPU right here. We're saying CPU percentage is high. Well, not is high. I've not written that, but I'm just saying CPU percentage high, you can write whatever you want. And this is the same variable that we're printing out here that we just checked in this condition. And then and equals to this. This value just makes sure that it does not go to the next line. Because I wanted to make sure that the time is printed right in front of the CPU percentage. Now, after that, we're doing this thing with the time, making sure that we have the current, uh, the current uh, time in a format that is readable and understandable. After that, this is where the sound thing happens. This is where the beep happens. And you can actually make uh, make these, ch um, change the duration basically. This is one second, okay? This is in milliseconds, so 1,000. That would mean uh, one second. You can keep it 2,000, 3,000, whatever you want. Um, you can change the frequency as well. Then I'm printing the current time and I'm making sure that uh, my program goes ahead and tries to access this information every 10 seconds. So it's going to sleep here for 10 seconds. So once the sleep time is over, it's going to go back to the main function and the same process is repeated again and again. Now, you can change all these values. You can keep the sleep time um, as you know one second, two seconds, whatever you want to do. Uh, you can change the threshold as well, which I'm going to change right now, I'm pretty sure, to make sure that I demonstrate to you what a pro what the program looks like in the output. And you can change the other values as well. So let's take a look at the program now, uh, the output, how it looks. All right, before we make changes to the script and change it from 80 to something lower, to make sure that you hear those beep sounds as well that were annoying me all this time. So I'll share that experience with you. Do not worry about that. But I just wanted to show you the output from uh, the program when it was running in the background and I kept the threshold value as 80 and it went to 81. It gave us the time as well when it happened. And this is what I was talking about, the end equals to quotation marks. So this makes sure that your time does not go to the next line and it's printed in the same line. So 81, 83, so whatever's above 80, it's going to show us that information. Okay. Okay, time to make the change to the program. I'm going to make it, uh, uh, I don't want to keep it really low because it's going to be extremely annoying. Um, let's keep it at. Okay, let's keep it at 40. Okay, let's let's give it a shot. At 40, um, the rest of the things are just going to stay as they are. And I'm just hoping that it does not go crazy this time. Okay, let me just run it real quick. Let me show you what it looks like when I run it. Okay, so there you go. It's asking me for the username. It's not going to ask me for the password. Is I've statically uh, manually type that in the program. So I'm going to use API. I'm going to say iron pool. Okay. I'm not going to say the whole <laughs> the whole thing. Okay. It's a password. Okay. I guess it's even lesser than that. So uh, in the program, if we check, we, we kept it at 40, I believe, 40. Well, the CPU is doing pretty well right now. It wasn't doing that well before. It was in the range of uh, 50 and so on but right now it looks like yeah it's it's kind of lower than that so i'm possibly gonna uh, decrease the number now and see how it looks okay i've changed it to 30 now right here and let's see once i run this program 
if it's going to go all that crazy, if we're going to do that beep sound stuff. Let's take a look. So there you go. Just ran this program and just executed it. Come on. Okay. Beautiful. Now, let me type in the password. My goodness, it's going to start right now. Okay. Okay. Let's wait for it. Let's see what it does now. Come on. <laughs> Don't do that. Come on. Okay, let me see. Let's take a look at... I'm checking the device in the meanwhile. Make sure what's going on. Okay, I'm not able to access the... Oh, it's possibly because I have the other script running on it as well. I'm not trying to kill the device. Just making sure that you know, have it monitored. Ah, there you go. Finally. Okay. Now the CPU percentage, 70. I've kept it as, um, the threshold as 30. So, aha, uh -huh. there you go. 70 again. So, therefore, that's the reason we see this. Okay. Now, okay, let me just check it from the CLI as well. It is at 73% on the, yep, right here. 73 percent so um if you if you run this program this is uh, this is how it's going to keep updating and letting you know with those annoying beep sounds that your cpu is high obviously not going to keep it at um 30 um when you're trying to do it uh in real time on your esa well at that time you're going to keep it like 80 or 90 percent and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm just going to close it off for now. But also just remember, this is just for educational purposes. And uh, yeah, before you run any of this in your network, in your environment, the risk is on your shoulders, my friend. Okay, so thank you so much. I'm going to put the script in the description below. And if you have any questions, all welcome. Please go ahead and ask and let's make it interesting. And uh, I'm going to uh, come up with new stuff on it. And uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. Well, thank you so much again. Have a great time, fellas.